Prepare yourself for the measure of silence. The entire realm of consciousness, with everything that comes from it, down to the very lowest levels, in other words, the entirety of existence, shifts between times of silence and times of speech. When the universe prepares itself to receive a supernal outpouring from God, everything is still in silence. Then, when those forces that have received God's outpouring pour it forth to those below them, speech begins. Our human reality also shifts in this manner. When we direct our mind to improving qualities that are below our spiritual level, then our consciousness is constricted and we are active in the world. But when our supernal attention grows strong, this constricted consciousness can no longer act. At that time, silence begins to rule. When you reach this level, the normal activity of consciousness, whether it is dealing with everyday or holy matters, is below you. You find yourself within a great unceasing opposition to any activity of consciousness that is rational and structured. Prepare yourself for the measure of silence. Take heed of the voice from above that brings blessing and goodwill and spontaneously gives to you. God's word will come to you. Day to day expresses speech. The torch of impeccable intent. Humanity must develop a great deal before it can realize the great appreciation that the idealism hidden in the depths of the soul has for intent and will. The soul is at all times adorned in a wealth of new colours. These colours display a small part of its treasure and beautiful greatness. All great moral actions in this world, whether on a small or on a broad level, are more than small manifestations, tiny sparks of the great torch of impeccable intent. Intent is everything. The coming to life of intent is the coming to life of the world. There is prayer with intent, divine union with intent, mitzvah and obligation with intent, possibility and the breadth of life with intent. And there is the intent itself. It has an intellectual and moral shape with its glory and grandeur, its charm and holiness, its unending elevation, its divine heights. There is the intent that stands out in letters, in names, in which each letter and vowel is a depth and abundance of seas and currents, great and broad channels of life, desire, idealism and wisdom, power and might, emanation and beauty. And there is the intent that adheres to the holy bodies of pure ideal human beings. All the joy of their lives is straightness and goodness in action and in morals. This is an intent that is living and fresh. How much light does it shine into the world? And then the supernal realms of secrets arrive. It connects the intending soul with the wellspring of the life of ideas with the root of their root. Then an infinite light, the light of the living God, spills forth, gushing in every syllable and action. Intent is the birth of action. Within the supernal intent and the intent that is filled with divine life are included every thought of peace and every thought of the war for justice and right, every victory of wisdom and of a good and pleasant order. Every rectification of the world is included within it. The appearance of creativity. Our spirit places within us the image of its creations. We recognize that angel, filled with life, who sits upon the birth stool, bringing forth its works. That angel is flying in the heights, approaching us, appearing to our souls, Behold, it comes. We welcome that angel with great peace and joy. 
the angel appreciates our affection in the most refined, pure, alive and strong manner. More than we ourselves, encased in physicality, can appreciate it. And then, we have finished the work of creation, or it has suddenly, unfinished, ceased. Lift your eyes upon the angel, yet it is not there. The cherub has taken flight and risen to the heights, and our spirit is diminished. We then concern ourselves with Torah and wisdom, good deeds and character improvement, in order to gain connection to our holy angels, in order to strengthen our own might with the great power of the gracious God, who appears to us in his light and salvation. A host of different states mingles within us. Strength and weakness meet. Love and abhorrence mix. Trust and fear act as one. Light and darkness are in confusion. All this results from the paucity of our purification. Let us rise higher. The return to godliness shall grow and rise with mighty strength. The will shall rise in its holy exaltation. We ascend beyond the flesh and its pollutions. We ascend beyond the falsehoods and seduction of our environment. In truth, we cleave to truth. The light waxes stronger and life is exalted. The Creative Soul It is impossible to interrupt the creativity of a person whose soul by its nature creates unceasingly. When one is oppressed by spiritual malaise, this is only because one believes creativity to be a burden. But the more one descends to its secret, the more does one come to realise that it is not burdensome or wearisome. One imitates one's maker. The Holy One, blessed be he, did not create his world with toil and trouble. He perfected it without fatigue and exhaustion, but with the means of a letter that has no weight and suffers no weariness. The true tzaddikim, who are supernal holy beings, in their essence rise beyond all toil and fatigue. They would be satisfied with all toil and trouble, all suffering and difficulty, all sacrifice and backbreaking labour, only to do the will of the living God and King of the world, the creator of their souls, the King of Israel and its Redeemer, the Master of all creatures and God of all spirits. But despite their willingness, they are filled with comfort and peace. The flow of pleasures flows constantly in their holy souls. A breath of richness and abundance penetrates into their breath, spirit and body, all their inner being, bones and flesh. From the midst of the pleasure of this supernal glory, they take pleasure in a supernal fear and love in their service, in all the breaths of their spirits, and in all their lives and movements. Theirs is entirely a supernal godly service, with no interruption, no ceasing whatsoever. The flow of this well of mindfulness and emotion constantly pours within them from all sides. All that they pay heed to, hear, feel physically and feel emotionally, speaks glory, speaks, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The earth is filled with his glory speaks peace and blessing to every living thing, to all flesh. The heavens and earth, with all that moves upon them, will praise him. The freedom of the creation and its blessings gain breadth in their mind and heart. At every moment, new worlds are born, formed and exist. The worlds that were already created are elevated to a new form that is supernal, holy, precious and beautiful. These worlds are renewed in every expression and word, in a flow of forms that are new and ultra new, that rise like waves, like a host of great breakers. None is tired, none stumbles, there is no toil or weariness, rather comfort and joy. I will rejoice in Hashem, I will have joy in the God of my salvation. 
But if these tzaddikim, these supernal holy ones, do not believe in themselves, if they do not pay attention to the voice of the shofar of supernal freedom that calls to them, then a profusion of waters will plummet upon them and endanger their lives. They shall be submerged in the muddy depths until they recognize their greatness and beauty, their glow and holiness. Then, in place of the pressure towards toil and depression that rests upon them, which would desecrate the name of their God, they will, with strength and joy in its place, rise to freedom and pleasure. They will know how to unite all the flames of their ardour, all their movements, and not only their own, but also of those who join their circle, of whoever comes in contact with them and stands before them in the shared vision with a complete unity, with the brilliant, living and precious light that sparks forth from the glow of the Almighty, whose glory fills the world whose eminence and beauty rest upon all his pious ones. The flow of the soul's creativity. Those who possess great souls live precisely from within their wellspring. These wise creative people, to whom the new is the foundation of their life, recognize only in the pouring forth of newness which ceaselessly streams before their spiritual sight, the constant spreading forth of their caliber and the intensification of their spiritual strengths. They recognize the soul in the depth of its primal being, how it constantly pours forth its cataracts, with no less actuality than a shining body that unceasingly radiates light, so does the soul which experiences recognition and desire, feeling and visualization, pour forth the rays of its spiritual living light. This stream pours forth ever more strongly, creates ever more strongly. No amount of pages will suffice to explain the vision of any period of this streaming forth of the soul in even the smallest of people. Thus, does this wealth grow until it comes to be within the exalted thinkers, the greatest creators, to such a wondrous level that the masses are astonished at the illuminations revealed in the fruit of their creations. And this is so, even though the portion that is revealed is, by necessity, the lowest level of the essence of creation. As for the essence, of the creation in its hidden aspect, wondrous are its acts and its streams, which are the streams of the mind, rush forth. It does not allow us to grasp the inner essence, the quality and the details of these pouring streams. The most worthy talent is the penetration into the depth of our essential being, Yet, how trivial is the work of that talent, and how much does it infect the exalted heights with toil and weariness of soul. To the degree that one recognises this, and recognises how much that penetration must grow aware of the demand of the inner Edenic quietude, to that measure will grow the exalted being within creativeness. Then sparks of holiness will begin to shoot forth upon all life and its spiritual ramifications. At every moment, even the most infinitesimal we create, whether knowingly or unknowingly, a profusion of endless creations, if we only teach ourselves to feel them, to bring them into the realm of our conscious recognition, to habituate ourselves, to convey them into the framework of expressions that are fit for them, their beauty and glory will be revealed. Their action will be revealed before all of life. The eternal truths will flow from the wellspring of life, from the source of the soul that does not know of any empty matters or falsehood. That soul is carved from the torch of truth. Whatever streams from its light 
will be only truth and righteousness forever. Illumination of the soul. As long as a person must wait for particular periods of time for the spirit of creativity to occur to him, at which opportunity he will generate ideas, contemplate them, express them and sing them, this is a sign that the light of his soul has not rested upon him. The soul sings constantly, clothed in strength and beauty, surrounded by supernal sweetness. One must rise to the heights and meet one's soul. One must recognize its spiritual progress, the rustle of its wings, filled with a glory of the Holy of Holies. One must be constantly ready to listen to the secrets of its holy speech. Then one will know that it is not at some particular time or period that the soul generates wisdom and expression, song and holy speech, but rather that at every moment and every hour it pours forth rivers and streams of milk and honey. The river that flows from the soul comprises the treasuries of holiness, the wellsprings of understanding and the hidden sources of good wisdom. New in the morning, great is your faithfulness. With an inner gaze into the depths of the soul, we see that the active, constant power of true supernal life does not cease working for even a moment. That power races and returns like the lightning in Ezekiel's vision. Its work is the service of the holy seraphim. It constantly bursts forth in joy and song, telling the glory of God. The essential I of the person who possesses this supernal soul is stupendous, but when the mighty faith is diminished by that I, it goes in mourning, and that person is desolate, and with him the radiance of the entire world is diminished. But when he returns in a supernal manner, when the glory of faith with its supernal powers, which pulse within him constantly without fail, returns to him, then his soul will live and shine forth. All the worlds that are at his feet and proceed with him will be filled with radiance and illumination. <laughs>